going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and today we're going back to the film grade versus commercial grade series. And I want to go ahead and throw this out there. During the analysis stage of this video, I'm mostly just talking about what I see as new trends in commercial versus film grading. Just as new clothing trends come and go with their seasons, so does color. Now color does take a little bit longer to move throughout that cycle, anywhere from just a few years to a few decades, but it is important as a colorist to be on top of these trends and stay up to date. So as you may notice in many of today's commercials, there's a smaller and smaller distinction between film grading and commercial grading. Now, obviously you can't take a slap chop commercial and tell me it looks like Blade Runner, but you could take a look at this Acura commercial and say it's reminiscent of something like Ford v Ferrari. The margin between film grading and commercial grading is ever decreasing, but there are still a lot of nuances and that's exactly what I wanna to cover today, specifically in the car realm. Ever wonder how to turn your SDR grade to HDR? In addition to that, this free webinar includes proper workflow to using Hollywood's most used film print emulation, custom techniques to stress testing your LUTs, future proof LUTs for HDR and ASUS workflows, learn to balance your footage in seconds with printer lights, secrets to building an HDR ready note tree, prepping Dolby Vision trim for Netflix, pro tip when saving a power grade. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. And you guys know what to do. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any uploads. Also be sure to follow us on Instagram. And with that, let's roll the intro. So jumping right in today, we're looking at commercial grading versus film grading, and there's never one process. There's never one size fits all, uh, but I do want to get a little bit into the theory of commercial versus film grading here, uh, specifically in the car world. Originally, the goal was to create an image that's as poppy as possible. Uh, this commercial here is a pretty good example of that. You see the whites are almost just completely blown out, all sitting right at about 100, um, and it's just as much contrast as we can throw in as possible. We want the bright highlights to be almost completely white and the blacks to be almost completely black. Uh, we want to push that and stretch this image as much as we possibly can. And film, if we look at a couple of film stills here, that is not the case. Uh, the Blade Runner 2049, like look at how much of the actual tonal range they're using. Nothing's above 60. So this is obviously what we would say looks good. Like objectively, this is a great looking image and we are not seeing all of that tonal range used because it's not about how bright an image gets, it's about contrast. And contrast can be created in a lot of different ways, uh, but it does not involve using the zero to 100 range. Um, contrast is a lot of nuance. And I think that's something that you just kind of pick up on and you learn just by eye, uh, just as you grade hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of shots. And that's something that not everybody starts off good at. So if you're not there yet, don't feel bad. You just have to not be good for a little while. I think that's part of the process. There was a, when I was doing a lot of photography, uh, one of the quotes that I had to keep reminding myself of was that in order to take good pictures, you have to take tens of thousands of bad pictures. And it's kind of the same with grading. Whenever you jump into grading, especially if you're new to the concept as a whole, you aren't going to be great at first. In order to create beautiful grades, you have to start off making pretty bad grades. Chances are, unless you have some kind of crazy leg up, your first grades are not going to be that great and you're probably going to be embarrassed by them in six months and that's a good sign. That means you're growing, you're improving. But back to the topic at hand here, um, just on the tonal range thing. We rarely see a large part of the image stretch from you know 100% white to all the way to zero black. So comparing this modern film look with this shot maybe from Nissan, I mean, we see a very strong difference in the approach, but the lines are starting to blur a little bit. And if we look at this ad from Acura, this is a lot more similar. If you look at the scopes particularly, it's a lot more similar to what we would see in today's uh, modern films, with the exception of the specular highlights. In this shot here from Blade Runner, uh, the, the widest parts of the image, they're still you know below 100, uh, around, around 84. And that's gonna be like the brightest part of the image. Whereas this shot here, most of everything's sitting below 60. Uh, but the specular highlights, if I could scroll over the, the headlights here, for example, they are absolutely right up there at 100. Same thing with a logo, just using those specular highlights to stretch the image and take full advantage of the tonal range. So it's kind of become less of stretching everything to from the bottom to the top. And it's become more about giving it more of a film look, but using the specular highlights to stretch those to the top. So with that in mind, we're gonna look at commercial versus film grading with this shot here. And we're gonna build a quick film grade and then a quick commercial grade. And all of it is gonna be strictly taking advantage of the, the ideology behind film versus commercial grading. Uh, none of this is gonna be something you have to follow 
you know, step by step. I'm going to be using a, a number of tools to build the looks, uh, but it's all about the theory behind it. It's all about the approach, not so much about the execution, because there's a billion different ways to actually execute what I'm going to be doing. But I just want to show you what I'm looking at, what my eyes drawn to when I'm doing those two different tasks. Because when I'm grading a commercial, I'm looking at different areas of the image. I'm focusing on bringing out different parts of the image. When I'm working on a film, there's totally different goals. I'm telling a story that's very different from the story I'm telling when I'm selling a product uh, in the color suite that is. So to get started, I'm gonna close down Resolve, change the scaling settings so it's easier for you all to see, and we're gonna go from there. All right, so getting started, we're actually gonna do our commercial look first, and then we'll do our film look. And I'm actually going to use a new plugin that I've been experimenting with, and I've been a really big fan of it. Also, I think pretty soon, uh, Kazi did secure a little bit of a discount, so be on the lookout for that. We'll be announcing anything here very soon. Uh, but Look Designer is, from Color Lab AI. If you're interested, I really recommend checking out and experimenting with it. Uh, it's been very useful for me. You can use it in a number of ways. And, and today we're gonna be using it to do our color space transform, our color management, and we're also going to be using it to apply both our commercial and our film grade. Both looks are gonna be derived from the same kind of look, but we're gonna be doing some work in the commercial grade that will be omitted in the film grade. Um, and we'll you know, make some changes that are a little more specific to a film look that I wanna apply. So when you drag on Look Designer onto a node, it starts off in the RE Log C profile, but we're gonna go ahead and switch this to uh, the red profile that it's actually shot in, which is Legacy and Dragon 2 Red Log Film. And whenever we select that, which is our input profile, essentially an IDT, uh, that gives us a proper conversion and our output is Rec 709, and that's gonna match our timeline settings. Now you notice over here, this plugin allows you to do a whole lot, and it also handles the proper order of operations for you within this, but what I really like using this plugin for is all the film emulation, uh, the different negative film emulations and the positive stock options that you have. So to start off, we're gonna go into our negative options and we're gonna select the negative that this would have been shot on. I'm gonna use the negative stock gen two, which is the method. Uh, there's a few different negative options on here. And then for the actual stock, we wanted to have it shot on or emulated that it was shot on. I'm gonna go with Agfa XTR 250. I have been leaning a lot into the Agfa stocks lately, uh, as opposed to the Fujifilm or Kodak, uh, at least for my negatives. So you can select uh, the 5219, which you'll also see a lot of, and you can increase that intensity there to 100. And so now you see the Kodak 5219 negative, uh, but I really do enjoy the Agfa. So that's where we're gonna start. And then we're gonna go into our print options. This would be the positive. And we're gonna select Kodak 2383 because I still think it's one of the best. And then for our, uh, that's our contrast option. And then for the print stock, we're also gonna choose uh, 2383 Modern. So now you have more controls over the way that these two interact with each other. And we can increase that contrast there. I'm gonna leave this right about here. And my goal here is to give it kind of a push look, but it's gonna be more clean than the, uh, the, com the film grade that we do. We're just working on the commercial grade right now. And so this is handling a lot already. That's just setting our negative options and our positive options uh, for a little bit of a film print emulation. So here's before and here's after. We can bypass our negative and positive options here. So here's the negative print LUT, and then here's the positive print LUT. Now for the commercial look, what I would really wanna focus on is making sure that this car stands out and that's gonna be done through a series of windows as well as some adjustments made to the hues. And I'm gonna do all of that prior to this. Essentially, it's a CST right here. So we'll go ahead and label this node LD for look designer. And now I'm gonna add a node prior. You can do that with Shift S. And this first one, we're gonna start working on some of the hues. And I wanna make sure that this car stands out. So let's go ahead give ourselves a little more room here. And I wanna use the color warper to manipulate my hues here because it's gonna give me a little bit more finesse and pushing these colors around. Uh, and it's also just a few options that you can't quite achieve with your hue versus curves. So first thing I'm gonna take my center point here. I wanna cool everything off just a little bit. And that's gonna help make the car stand out because what we're essentially doing is taking the neutral tones and pulling them more towards teal. And then I'll take a point here, kind of along that line that the car is sitting in. We're just gonna increase the saturation and we're going to swing this hue a little bit more red. Now, in this case, we aren't necessarily matching this car to any specific color. Uh, it's kind of more just a feel, but if it was a, more of a commercial shoot, then we may spend more time finessing the color of the car and making sure it matches what we need it to. So from there, I'm gonna keep increasing saturation. I kind of like the hue where it's at. We're just gonna disable and re-enable this. And already the car is standing out a whole lot more. I'm also gonna take my blue point here, desaturate this just a touch. Same with this one. And I usually have a nine by over here, but I'm just gonna swap to the vector scope to see where we're at. 
It's looking pretty good. I'll also take my kind of green and yellows. We'll saturate them. We really want to push this image quite a bit. We'll swing this hue over to yellow. Actually, because the card's red, we're going to pull it more towards blue. I think it's going to look a little bit better. So now before and after with just our color warper, this is what we're looking at. But as we noticed, if you look at this reference image here from one of our commercials, you'll see that the whites go all the way up. So even though the majority of the image is sitting a bit lower, those specular highlights are really pushed to the extreme here. So we'll look at a couple more just to kind of get a, an idea of where these really bright highlights should be. I mean, just pretty much clipping right here. This one's very, very bright, but I'm really more interested in analyzing these images where the big chunk of the image is sitting a bit lower and we have specular highlights reaching all the way up to the top. Now, if we look at some of the film stills that we grabbed, all of the image is sitting lower. And this also goes back to the whole contrast conversation. It's not so much of how bright is your brightest part of your image and how dark is the darkest part. It's more about the, the fine tuned contrast that we're building. So we can, for the most part, keep the contrast we have here because this is a good looking contrast. It looks great, but we can still push the top range, uh, the top end of that image up to be a little bit higher and get closer to this 100 mark. So the way we're gonna do that, very simple, after our hue adjustments, we're gonna add a serial node and we're gonna go into our log wheels and we're gonna set our high range. We're gonna bring this, actually we're gonna leave it as is right now. First, we're just gonna start pulling these highlights up and see what we're grabbing. And so looking at mostly the scopes right now, I'm just seeing what I'm doing to the image, which parts of the image I'm grabbing. And let's take our high range now and pull this back to grab a little bit more. And it's kind of jumping. That's part of just working underneath that contrast curve that we have. But right about here, I'm liking what that's doing for the most part. So if we disable this, you'll see we're really bringing those highlights up in the bottom right corner by the scopes. And then if you look at the actual image, of course, you see the same things happening there and we're starting to get more pop. I think I'm actually gonna bring it down to around 0.45. That's pretty good. I think we're getting a lot more contrast here in the actual cars details, those, those highs and lows. We're really separating those and I really like what's happening there. So now we've got some great push and pull with the colors and the car standing out. Uh, we can still do a little bit more just in terms of windows and, and shaping this light. And of course we could spend days just refining the look of the car. Uh, but let's just go ahead and, and add a couple parallel nodes. And here we're gonna throw in a couple of OFX that are just gonna help our car stand out because we're doing a commercial grade here. And then we're also gonna add in a few windows to help focus your eye on where to go. So first thing I'm gonna do is just bring a window around the car. And we're gonna be sure we feather this and kind of mimic the shape of the car. I usually like this to be very gradual, very, very soft, and I'm okay with it extending past just the car. I want the car to be the center point of this change. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert this window and we're gonna make a slight vignette. I'm just gonna pull everything outside of the car down a little bit. And actually let's, let's center this curve we're introducing a little bit lower, right around here. So now we're just gonna create an outside node. There we have it. And now we're operating inside of that window. And what I'm gonna do here is add just a touch of gain kind of to the, to the upper mids. And then we're gonna counter that by pulling down in our lower mids. And now after disabling and re-enabling, it's a little bit strong. What I'm actually gonna do is link all the channels so we're affecting the color information as well. And then just reselecting that point is going to kind of connect all those curve points. So that's looking okay. I think it might be a little bit oversaturated in that red area, but we can fix that later if we needed to. Overall though, I'm liking where it's at. So now before and after both of these windows, it just brings a little bit more attention to the, to the car. And then we'll also add a little bit of a gradient window from the bottom here. Gonna be coming up from this right corner and we'll just do the Y and we'll just bring this down slightly. And it's okay to make these ridiculously strong in a commercial. Um, you don't really have a whole lot of time to analyze if something looks 100% realistic. It's more about how can you shape the light to make the eyes go where you need them to go for that, you know, three frames of that shot's going to be present on screen. Um, so this is okay. So that's not looking too bad. It's definitely punchy. We'll probably do a little bit more selective saturation here in node five, where I don't think we're actually going to need node six. And we're just going to add an extra node after our look designer node. And we're just going to add some sharpening because that's kind of important uh, in a commercial like this. You want to show off those curves, those contours, uh, and make sure all the edges are nice and sharp. All right. So now here, that selective saturation I was talking about, I want to go into our curves and our hue versus sat. And we're just going to pull down this red a touch where it's still popping off the screen, but it's not clipping. 
We'll pull up our vector scope here as well. And right around here, I know I did some work in the color warper earlier, but now we're gonna be doing it in hue versus. So it's kind of like complementing and stacking those two changes. So here I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on our vector scope and I'm gonna make this a little bit larger for you to see. Cause what I wanna do is start to unify the colors of the car here. So I'm just making fine adjustments here and really trying to squeeze this color to be a little bit more similar. I think right there is gonna do. So if we disable that, mainly looking at the vector scope, we're just kind of unifying all those different reds to make them more restricted. So from here, we probably just need to track this window as it's a moving shot. It's not gonna move too much. So now in playback, everything's looking good. And we've got that very poppy image mostly coming off the screen. So let me go ahead and label these. This is gonna be our highlights adjustments. It's gonna be our vignette. This will be our outside, our floor, which is obviously not a floor, it's a ground, but I call it a floor node. And then we'll have this one, which is just our hue node. So from here, at this point, if we needed to make exposure adjustments, those would need to come first. So if we needed to kind of give our shadows a little bit of a boost, we can do that with our lift, gamma, and gain here in the first node. So now we're just bringing things up a little bit and then the entire image is being run through this pipeline. So everything is still gonna hold up quite nicely. So let's kind of split the difference with this change here, go into our keyer and then for the key output 0.5, kind of splitting that difference. And now we have this image and we play through, it looks nice. Still looks very filmic, but it's also geared towards being a commercial. We've got those stretched out highlights. Most of the image is sitting pretty low. And to me, it looks nice. It really calls a lot of attention to the car. And so now we'll go ahead and save this version and this will be our commercial grade. Now we'll go ahead and start working on our film grade. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete everything here except for the look designer node. Relink this. And now I'm gonna have a slightly different process here. We're gonna add a couple nodes prior. So for the film grade, I wanna keep things a little bit simpler. Uh, we're not gonna be doing as much work to make sure that the car's color is unified because that doesn't matter so much. We want that to feel authentic to the film characteristics we're trying to emulate. And we also don't necessarily need to create as many windows uh, to draw as much attention to the car because the shot's likely gonna be on screen longer. Uh, obviously, if you look at the average duration of a cut in a commercial, it's much, much shorter than that of a film. So we don't have to be as extreme with the windows we're creating. But we'll go back to this first frame, kind of this hero frame, keeping in mind that it does end up getting a little bit darker here. And what I wanna do here is start to push the image a little bit further because I do wanna bring up some of those upper mids of those highlights, but not so much like the, the commercial grade. So we're just gonna go into our primaries wheels and our gain. It's gonna bring up our gain and then come down on our gamma. And we'll get that to a nice point and then we'll come up in our lift. And we can also go back into our look designer node. Go ahead and label this first one LGG and then we can actually go into our look designer node and I think it's just a little bit too saturated. If you looked at our film stills, none of these are super, super saturated. They're all somewhat muted. And so that looks pretty good. That's kind of a characteristic of film. So we're gonna go back here and our look designer node. So if you scroll down, you actually have an option for post-processing. We're gonna go ahead and enable that. Leave it as FPE, and then we're gonna increase the intensity here right around 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And then we're gonna do some work in the subtractive color model. And we're going to increase some cyan. And one thing to note is that as you are making changes here in the CMY, uh, the cyan, magenta, and yellow, you're also adjusting exposure. So keep that in mind. Just gonna start to balance this out give that car some red. And then also increase on the yellow. And so if we bypass this, you'll see the change we made here. I'm liking that. And you'll see I'm kind of like bouncing back and forth between the, the overall palette I'm giving it. Uh, but I do like this as is. Making a few more tweaks to that FPE post-processing, making sure that's still where I want it. And that's not too bad right there. We're just gonna go also to overall saturation and pull this back a touch. So now I'll have a third node here. This one's just gonna be called curves. We're gonna go into our hue curves as well as our RGB curves. Starting off in hue versus hue. I'm just gonna give these yellows a little bit more red. Move this one over and make sure our greens are staying green by giving it a new anchor closer to yellow. And then we'll go into hue versus sat. We'll pull this up. Just give that car a little bit more saturation. 
And now we'll hop over into the custom curves. And here I'm gonna go into my blue curve and we're just gonna take this top point and start to pull it down a little bit. And then we'll kind of cancel that out from the midtones and below. So now before and after here, not a whole lot happening, but we're giving a little bit less neutrality to the upper mids. You can see that in the white stripes here and then also in the upper mids of the skies right there. So now after our look designer node, we're gonna go ahead and add a serial node and we're gonna add our grain. And honestly, this could be it for the film look. They don't actually have to be that much different. We'll go ahead and select 16 millimeter 500T. No particular reason, I just think it looks the best. Uh, as a starting point, it helps get me to where I think looks the best quicker. Increase that strength. And then we could also soften the image if we really wanted to go for some more film emulation. But overall, just looking at this image here, I mean, I like this playing through. And for the most part, I mean, this is gonna hold up very well because all the changes are pretty mathematical. We're not doing a lot of manipulation just with curves and, and tools that are you know, extraneous and unnecessary. And so if we go back to the commercial grade, You'll see the difference here. And now you're also seeing how strong, uh, one, the sharpening is, and then how strong that, that side window from the side is. And you're going back, I'd probably make some more changes to that, but as we're just flying through this tutorial and I'm explaining things as I'm doing them, uh, you know, it works there for now. So anyways, the main difference is, is the exposure, the contrast that we've built, uh, and just the overall mood. This feels more harsh and in your face. And then this feels a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more reserved and more natural. So hopping back out of this, let's go ahead and walk through the changes we've made on each shot. And we'll start with the film grade and we'll go back to the commercial grade, but, but we're gonna go in order of our operations here. So we started off with the look designer and this handles a whole lot. I won't even walk you back through all the parameters, but essentially it's, it works as our CST, you know, our color space transform from the camera space. It includes the output transform and then we're also doing some film emulation inside of that. We're assigning it the film negatives to emulate as well as the positives and continuing to make a few other changes based on the CMYK subtractive color model as well as some post-processing effects. We've also got our LGG to make some changes to our lift gamma and gain in terms of overall exposure. Lastly, we have our curves. Overall, very simple and we finish up with grain. So not a whole lot of steps to achieve this, but what we've done is we've just left it all more natural. We've let the look designer plugin do most of the work. Film convert is another similar option where you're just, you're leaving a lot of the look development to your creative discretion and how you combine certain inputs and outputs and certain negative film emulations and positive film emulations, the way you combine those. And of course that's going to lead to a slightly more filmic result. But the, the trick is whenever you're doing a commercial, that's also supposed to have somewhat of a filmic look, how do we keep it filmic, but leave it more commercialized and in your face. Um, and that usually comes from exposure, shaping light and pulling out fine details of a car, for example. And so that's exactly what we've done here. So we'll go ahead and disable everything again and we'll walk through one by one, just step by step. And again, we start off with the look designer node and this does a whole lot here, not much different from the film look, but we go much further here. Of course, we start working with our highlights to pull them up and really make them pop. So here's before and after on our highlights node. You see what that's doing to the tail lights, the stripes, the highlights of the car compared to the shadows. We're leaving them as is. We're maintaining that natural contrast, but bringing up almost just our specular highlights. And then we have our hue adjustments, which this does a whole lot here, mostly using the color warper, taking our neutral tones, shifting them to be more cool, and then aligning some of the hues of the car that we know we're gonna refine later, and also swinging the colors of our uh, foliage to be a little more blue-green as opposed to yellow-green, so it competes less with the car, helps the car stand out a little bit more. And then we do our vignettes here, where we just add a vignette around the car, and then we make our car pop out a little bit more by adding some more contrast to that inside node. And then we have this excessive floor node uh, that's kind of meant to be a hyperbole. I don't usually keep them this strong, um, but just as an example, you can use those gradient windows to kind of kill certain areas that are a little bit distracting. So that's very handy. And then lastly, we have the hue node, and this is mostly just our hue versus curve to align the hues of the car uh, and desaturate them slightly because they were a little bit too hot. And then our first node, we've kind of got this exposure adjustment that just brightens things up a little bit and pulls up those shadows a touch overall. And then we finish it off with a little bit of sharpening. That's actually probably way too strong. I think I was just exaggerating uh, the actual change I'd be making there, but we can leave it here and uh, that's not too, too bad. So now let's go ahead and check out both final looks. I 
Now that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to the latest episode of Commercial versus Film Grading. Now don't forget, we have linked down below the free HDR training, and we also cover in that training Hollywood's most used film print LUT and how to be sure you're setting up your project correctly so you're using that LUT correctly. Now if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome tutorials, and be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. With that, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you